if you look at us being one island, if you look at uh, a, a single coastline, you, you argue, of course, very clearly that environmental pollution, climate change problems, security, defense problems, no, no man-made borders. And therefore, it may seem an irony that we are considering erecting new barriers at a time when every uh, other part of the world is considering dismantling them. You could then build the argument around security and defense and say, look, as was the original case for the Union, our security and our defense is best guaranteed by being part of this uh, Union. And there are 30,000 Scots jobs dependent on defense. Uh, it is unlikely that there would be a Scottish army of sufficient size ever in an independent Scotland to uh, uh, employ all those people who have wanted to join the British Armed Forces over time. And of course, the efficiency and uh, uh, allocation of resources that is possible with a bigger unit uh, makes it, you might argue, more sensible to guarantee your defence and security better uh, as part of a British arrangement. You could then put the argument on economics. Uh, and uh, maybe I'm not the best person to do that now. <laughs> uh, but you could argue that it does make, doesn't make any sense for particularly this new proposal that you're going to have a Scottish independent economic policy, but you're going to accept that it's going to be under an English currency. And so the Scottish national government has moved from uh, wanting to be joining the euro or wanting an independent currency to accepting, and this is an irony, and it's a, it's a colonial relationship if it were to happen, that the English government, not the Scottish or British government, would decide uh, how the monetary policy of the country is run. The, the monetary uh, committee would uh, be their decision. We could ask for members of it, but not necessarily get it. And interest rate decisions would be based on English calculations, and yet Scotland would want to live under this English currency. And it doesn't seem to me to make a great deal of sense for your economic policy to want to have autonomy and then to say that you're going to have a currency that is the English currency effectively imposed, interest rates imposed in Scotland. Now, all these arguments are possible. But in my view, if we want to do what I think we need to do to build a solid and sure foundation for Scotland's future, if we want to build an argument from first principles and not simply go with the expedient argument of the day, or whether this personality or that is popular, or whether uh, there is an Olympic bounce or not, if we want to build it on something that is lasting and enduring, I would suggest to you that the best way of thinking about Scotland's future is thinking about distinctive Scottish values, about those values that we in Scotland have held to be important, beliefs that we have thought significant in our lives, and I would ask you to think that these beliefs are not only distinctive, but they've been realized not just in Scotland and now through the Scottish Parliament, but as part of the union in the United Kingdom. Indeed, that Scottish values and Scottish beliefs and distinctive Scottish views have shaped the union over these last 300 years and will continue if we are smart and we do the right things to shape what is effectively a multinational union, one of the first that ever existed in the world.